Ah, good morning. The mammoth build continues after my little um, getting sidetracked with the uh, gyro. If you haven't seen that, check out the video. And of course, the um, weekend away at High Wycombe. Again, if you haven't checked out that video, have a look. Anyway, welcome to my channel. My name's Cliff of Cliff Harvey RC Planes, and I'm continuing with my mammoth build. Uh, I thought today, oh, let's tilt you down, I would get on with the lower wing a bit. Um, just get you in the right position there. The um, I was just looking at the ailerons and the hinges and uh, I've got to get the servo in. Uh, so I'm just going to get out a hinge. I'm going to be using these furry hinges as I call them which I used on the elevator I bought one of these little hinge hinge maker Dubro quick hinge slotter this is really for slotting um, uh, hinges in uh, the center of, of the wing not so much the top no, it says just rock it from side to side and I've got to aim it down a bit because as it will come out the top of the wing. I've not done this before, so it's all a learning curve. I'm going to keep rocking. Oh, ow. That was easy. Let's uh, see if a hinge will go in. Oh wow, I just noticed there were some pencil lines on the top as well, the previous builder has put in, so he planned to put one in just here, and I think that's a good idea because it's right in the middle. So, if I put that... thing is with CA, it grips so quickly that the hinge might not be all the way in, so... Perhaps if I put it partially in, soak it with CA, can't do it both sides, of course, push it in. Do you remember I showed you that little tip with cutting the slot in the hinge? I like that idea because I'm sure it helps to wick down the middle. So I'm going to do the same here. I'm going to cut a slot right down the middle of the hinge. Like that and that will hopefully allow a bit more CA to whip down into the center of the hinge that one there I can actually see the inside so I can a little bit there as well yeah and there okay guys let's have a go it's gonna be there and there check it it's a little bit low that side it's gonna come out the top of the surface if I don't gently down Cool, I've got to say, this is so easy. I bought this after one of my subscribers, Ian, up in Cardiff. Ian, thank you, mate, for recommending this. And uh, I saw one in the shop the other day when I went down. And I thought, I must pick one of those up. They're so cheap anyway. If anyone's looking for a good website for relaxing videos, 
Ian's RC exploits. Check him out. Right now, do these hinges line up with what I've got? I might have to move them sideways slightly. Let's have a look. Oh, look at that. Straight on. Ready? <laughs> Fantastic. Right. Now it's probably going to be prudent before I cover it to um, get the servo in and get the horn mounted and then take it all apart again. So let's just leave that in there for the time being. Yeah, that's not bad. <coughs> so I'm going, oops. <coughs> Just cause mayhem up there, look, moving the wing about because I'm fitting this back to front, really, aren't I? So, yeah, what I've done, I put the servo hatch on that positions the push rod, and then when the push rod's screwed on, then now I can position the servo. Uh, put the Z bend on the end of the wire, so control rod, I should say. So, that there, I need, I'm going to use. These little screws here, they should be long enough to get down into the plywood. This isn't as easy as I thought it would be. So the servo is going to sit in there somewhere. All I have to do is make up a mount for it. Pre-soak the end grain. For those of you that don't know, it's an old woodworking trick. You Put some glue in the end grain first, let it set a little bit, and then re-glue it. If you don't do that, then most of the glue that you put on your joint just gets soaked into the end grain and the joint isn't very good. And I calculate that that wants to be pretty much on the ground to get the angle right, so that's where I've put it. Okay guys, welcome back. Um, I've done a little bit more work uh, since I last saw you. Um, I've also gone out and cut the lawn, so <laughs> it's gone dark. Anyway, back to uh, the nitty gritty. I've glued the servo with epoxy straight to a cross bearer and so that's it that's the installation as simple as it can possibly be so all I have to do is to mount this little plate in position um, which I can do now and then I can take off the take the screws out and cover the aileron pop it back on covering materials knife scissors and ailerons Voila. Right there. So I'm going to whack this up to say 150 degrees C and we'll see how it goes. But I can start tacking it now. So that's the top pieces. This is the bottom piece. Tack on there just to hold that there. And around the back edge, so we know this stuff tightens out really well. Little tack, little tack, do little tacks, and then if you need to pull it off and reposition it, you can. It's not rocket science. I heard a joke earlier on. Chap goes into a pub. And there's somebody sitting there with a dog beside him. He sits down. Before he pats the dog, he takes the precaution of asking the man, 
did, did his dog bite? The man replied, no. So now the chap bent forward to pat the dog and promptly got his hand bitten rather badly. To which he said to the chap sitting there, I thought you said your dog didn't bite. And the chap said, that's not my dog. <laughs> I wonder how many of these planes have been built over the years. Okay, I'm happy with that. So we'll just tack it down. So I know I've said it before, but I'll say it again. Do not stretch it out at this stage. This applies to any covering, whether it's tissue or any any covering that shrinks. That's all coverings. Do not tighten it out. Yeah, because it'll bend it all up out of shape. Very gently run it along. Just let the weight of the blade sit on the balsa. Don't try and force it or she'll end up cutting into the balsa. Very light touch. To be honest, you can't really go wrong doing this sort of thing. The more you do it, um, the easier it becomes. Okay, okay, in it. Give this end the same treatment. And there. The reason we do the um, bottom surface first is because you have the overlap facing down, not up. Okay guys, that's the bottom surface done. Uh, obviously it needs tightening out and now I'm going to do top surface. Little tack in the corner, maybe one at the end, pull it slightly tight. Little tack there, little there. If you've never done iron on film covering before, you 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 really ought to try it. It's it's really satisfying, pretty straightforward. There's plenty of videos on YouTube that show you better than I am. And um, it's another oops, another skill that you've learnt. Okay, so that's sealed all around the edges. So now I can whack the heat up and have a look at tightening it out. I should just do a little bit to start because I'm going to put a little bit on the other side as well to try and stretch it evenly. tend to find on little things like this um, that the heat of the iron heats the inside of the structure up and it tends to shrink out both sides at the same time. Now we're just going to stick it on each rib now. There we are, there we have it, the finished later on. I'll do the other side now and quite pleased with that. There's no reason why I can't Put some super glue on that and try and dob it in. Before I do that, I'll do them both together. Let me hinge the other rail on. Quite a big gap on these alons to be honest, but they're supposed to be not too effective, so uh, I don't think a gap's going to make things much worse. Okay, 
That sure looks nice with ailerons on. If I put the super glue on the top, then I can bend them back. They won't pull out. Uh, here we go. Bit of glue. I think it's pulling itself in. Also known as capillary attraction. I'll turn it over. Let's see if we can put a bit of CA on the inside of the hinges. Alright guys, so there we are. That's the ailerons. Um, that's the ailerons hinged and in, and it just leaves. Uh, put the hatch back on. Drop the wires down through. Put the hatches on, and pop is your uncle. I'll knock it on the head now guys um, it's good job done next time you see it uh, things still left to do actually is the undercarriage yeah actually just the undercarriage can't think of any other little details so next job to do is going to be the undercarriage just finish off these servo covers and then get some paint on it so as usual thanks for looking in like and subscribe and uh, Okay guys, thanks for looking in. Like and subscribe, be appreciated and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for looking in.